Hi friends, it's Joe Chatburn, the Ambassador Network Director here at World Missionary Press. I'm here with a good friend who is a church planter, just an apostolic minister, precious brother in South Asia. Welcome, my dear brother. Thank you very much. So good to have you with us today. Let's get right to this because we've spoken before and I just loved what you had to say earlier. So let's just get right into this. My dear brother, the Lord has worked through you to plant over 10,000 house churches in South Asia. What evangelism and discipleship roles have World Missionary Press scripture booklets played in this remarkable endeavor? Yes, we, we are very much thankful to the World Mission. They are books, tracts we have received and uh, we have received thousands and thousands copies and we able to distribute to the market and the villages and the cities. And uh, after doing that, we have done the follow-up. You know, we send and the back of the uh, booklet, we have given our phone number and we see the many people they took and they contact back. So this is the way uh, we got uh, many people, especially the young people, they turn back and you know, they wanted to know more about Jesus and our folks, our people, our pastor and the leaders, they have done the uh, follow-up and the later we see the many people has come to the know Jesus. And I feel this is a great tools that the God has given uh, to reach many more people for Christ. That's beautiful. Now let's look at life with World Missionary Press scripture booklets juxtaposed to a world without them. If you did not have the booklets, mm -hmm. how effective would you be in comparison? Uh, I think uh, without book, uh, we can reach, but the book is helping to reach many more people. Because once upon a time, we can uh, reach a hundred and thousand people giving the booklet and they are reading and uh, God is, uh, you know, revealed themselves and they come to know Jesus and we do the follow up. And so this is, again, I would like to say that this is a great tools that the God has given through your mission where we can reach many more people for Christ. Yes, yes. I, I myself have been preaching and teaching for over 30 years, but I'm fully persuaded that people will forget what I say, but mm -hmm. if they have the printed yeah, word in front of them, absolutely they're right. much less yes. likely to forget and they yeah, can another, go back and reference another that. Another good news is that so when you go to the family, it's like a three or four member of the family, each and every one they read and read and read, repeated one. So, and also that goes to the, their friends and the relatives and the neighbor they pass on. So when they come to know the truth, so they like to share others to know the truth. And that help to community and the family to come to the know Lord Jesus. So this book is, uh, I mean, a very much uh, blessing to the people who is willing to know more about Jesus and it helped to uh, come to the Lord more. Yes. It's not only one, it is a hundred and hundred people, you know. So many people are, many are people, being reached. Many people to reach. That's amazing. It sounds like people are so generous and sharing these booklets and that's, uh, and really appreciating the Word of God in, in their native language. Yes, we are very much uh, blessed to have a, our own language booklet, which is the blessing, uh, so that our people can read uh, with our own language. Yes. So that's another great blessing uh, for us and for our people to know about Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful. So, a big question. Why house churches instead of the traditional model that has existed since the fourth century? Okay, now traditional church is absolutely fine. There is no bad at all. But where I live, the country uh, where I have seen, there are 100,000 people they're not going to the church and need to reach out. So therefore, I feel that house church movement is very much uh, helpful for them and for us to reach them with their culture. And the house church is there is a good benefit is that it is it's a small group, like a 20 or 25 people they come with a two or three family they come together and worship to the Lord. It is very good to discipling them, giving the leadership and send them out to reach out their friends, family and the relative. So the, the small group 
it's quite easy for them to share their burden, share their prayer request, and it is quite easy for us to help them because it is a small group. So I feel with our situation in our culture, in our place, is very much helpful to have a house church. And there's certainly biblical substantiation for yes. that. Uh, it was good for Priscilla and Aquila and Paul, so yes. uh, there, there must be something about it and uh, yes. breaking bread from house to house yes. and yes. that, tight, uh, that yeah. tight fellowship. Yes, yes. That's true. they have a loving relationship with each other. So we like to do the same thing, mm -hmm. to have a loving relationship with all our people. Yeah. Our prayer is to help them to grow so that they could help others to grow. Yes, I've been involved with house churches here in the United States, oh, and so I, so I have a deep appreciation Thank for you. that. And just the fellowship, and when it's not just one person speaking, you have one yeah, mouth yeah, and then a lot of ears, right. every member can be a yeah, joint yeah, of supply. Yeah, you're you're right. Leadership is recognized yeah. organically, and yeah. gifts flow organically, and, the, and it's just a beautiful thing. That's again, true. that's not knocking. I don't think we're going to reinvent the way yeah. people have done that, church that, since that, the 4th century. Absolutely right. But there's nothing wrong with this, and you can even find it in the Bible, and it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is beautiful. Yeah, and I see where people can be really tight-knit mm -hmm. and, uh, and loving right there in their communities. So, okay. So, who raises up leaders in these house churches, and how does the leadership structure work? Okay, now, our leadership structure is like that, like uh, me, and under me, we have a coordinator. Each district, we have a four coordinators. Under the coordinator, we have a leader, a village leader, area-wise village leader. So, under the village leader, they have a, their own leaders. Mm -hmm. Also, they have a, their own disciple to lead the house churches. Mm -hmm. So we had very good, uh, you know, the communication with each other. We like to know what is happening in the bottom part of. If there is a problem, they come to their leader. If he is not able to solve the problem, he come to his leader. Mm -hmm. Then he come to their leader. So the good news is that through the chain, we learn everyone mm -hmm. the situation, how to lead how to discipling them, what are the problems they are facing, what area they need to learn, what way we can build them. So caring for each other, helping each other, building them each other. So that's the way we help our leaders to grow. And the booklets are, are a part oh, of yeah. that. Now the booklets is one of the great tools uh, which help. When we get a books uh, from your side, we distribute to all the field. Mm -hmm. And then they distribute on their area where they can do the follow-up after giving. And our goal is to do the follow-up mm -hmm. so that we can uh, reach many more people for Christ. So mm -hmm. that's what we do. And also like a, we do have a big festival, a lot of big festival we have. So we like to distribute on the festival also, mm -hmm. the tracks, these books. So I could say uh, this is one of the great tools that God is providing uh, through your mission, world mission, praise, mm -hmm. which help us to reach many more people for Christ. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'd imagine it helps those who are getting into ministry. Yes, And where that's I true. was going, and what's something I'd like to discuss just briefly, here in the United States, mm -hmm. the typical pattern of someone becoming a minister or a, or a pastor is they'll feel a call on their life. They usually go to Bible college, seminary, mm -hmm. and then after they graduate, they either join a denomination, and the denomination appoints them to a church, mm -hmm. or a church votes them in. Mm -hmm. um, but this sounds like it's just organic. Like people recognize a call on their life, others recognize that, you and your team recognize that, and then help support these individuals to where they'll, yeah, to where they minister. But I guess some of their Bible college is the scripture booklets and the, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yes. You know, the, the more important, uh, the people who are serving the Lord with us, they are our people. Means they came to the Lord from our house church movement, house church ministry. Now, when they come to the Lord, 
uh, we feel that only believer is not enough. We need to teach them to being a strong believer and then we need to give a, a leadership to lead and share that testimony how they came to the Lord, to their family and the neighbors. And uh, the books are helping uh, them to teach them for yes. discipleship training program, which is really blessing uh, to build them because they have not gone through the Bible college. And we feel yes. that, uh, you know, so many leaders we have, yes. it's not required, everyone need to go Bible college, but we need a literature. I understand. To build them. Yes. yes. So yes. that's the way we are very much yes. thankful to the uh, your mission, World Mission Press. Yes. And that's beautiful because I have brothers and sisters across the world who mm -hmm. deal with great persecution and things that pastors in the United States do not. Mm -hmm. And they, they have to function on a level in the spirit that a, a lot of American pastors never enter into. So I, I'm not against education. I'm a, yes, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a theology major. It has its place, but it does not, uh, it just doesn't happen everywhere. But yeah. the fact that the Holy Spirit just yeah. takes hold of everyday people mm -hmm. who recognize the love of Jesus and want to share his love. Yes. And then I see that happened in the first century mm -hmm. and it was absolutely beautiful. And that, so that's what, that, that excites me. And the fact that our literature is helping them to be discipled. And so that's, uh, that's really a powerful thing. I really appreciate uh, what you're doing.